Good day. My name is Giovanni Camacho Espresor. I'm a professor of political science, international relations, and international law at the Department of Political Science, College of Social Sciences and Humanities, Mindanao State University, General Santo City in the Southern Philippines. In this lecture, I'll be talking about sources of international law. Basically, sources of international law are classified into two. First, primary or indirect sources, which compose of treaties or conventions, customs, general principles of law. Second, secondary or indirect sources, consisting of decisions of courts and writings of publishers. Let's talk about treaty. Not every treaty can be considered as a direct source of international law as it is not always concluded by great body of states. Examples are bilateral treaties between two countries. Therefore, let's say an economic treaty between Japan and the Philippines may not be considered as a direct source of international law. Bilateral treaties may become primary sources of international law if they are of the same nature, contain practically uniform provisions, and are concluded by substantial number of states, albeit separately. So extradition treaties are good examples of bilateral treaties which have become source of international law. The general rule, though, is that the treaty to be considered as a direct source of international law must be concluded by a sizable number of states and thus reflect the will of at least the consensus of the family of nations, examples of which are the, the Peace of Westphalia of 1848, the Congress of Vienna of 1815, the Declaration of Paris of 1856, the Geneva Red Cross Convention of 1864, and the United Nations Charter of 1945. Benewick defined custom as a practice which has grown up between states and has come to be accepted as binding by mere fact of persistent usage over a long period of time. Example, the practice of granting immunities to foreign heads of states or diplomats in the territory of the local state pursuant to what has come to be known as the principle of exterritoriality. Most customary rules of law have been expressly affirmed and embodied in treaties and conventions, like the Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907. Significantly, these rules, by virtue of their force as international customs and their express recognition, as generally accepted principles of international law bind even those states which have not signed these conventions. One defect of customary international law is the difficulty of determining when a practice can be considered to have hardened into custom and thus acquired obligatory character. Unlike conventional law, custom is not formally promulgated or struck off at a definite time. Another problem is its inability to adjust to the swiftly moving developments of an international society which it is supposed to regulate. General principles of law are mostly derived from the law of nature and are observed in the majority of states because they are believed to be good and just. Most of these general principles of law are actually or have originated from Romanic law such as prescription, Estapel, Pacta San Servanda, Consent, and Res Hodicata. Prescription refers to the process of acquiring rights, immunities, or obligations as a result of the passage of time. Estapel, a legal bar to alleging or denying a fact because one's own previous actions or words to the contrary. Pacta San Servanda, requires parties to carry out their obligations arising from contracts in good faith. Consent refers to voluntary acquiescence to the proposal of another, the act or result of reaching an accord, a concurrence of minds, actual willingness that act or an infringement of an interest shall occur. Lastly, res judicata 
a matter finally decided on its merits by the court having competent jurisdiction and not subject to litigation again between the same parties. Let's talk about indirect sources. According to Chief Justice John Marshall of the U.S. Supreme Court, the decisions of court of every country, so far as they are founded upon a law common to every country, will be received not as authority but with respect. Therefore, the doctrine of starry diseases is not applicable in international law. And so the decision of court in one case will have only persuasive value in the decision of a subsequent case. Writings of publicists to qualify as source of international law must be fair and unbiased representation of international law and by an acknowledged authority in the field. Thank you.